I move from the EM5 to the EM1, the first micro four thirds top of the range camera from Olympus. At first, I used the 12 to 50 lens that I had been using on the EM5, upgrading to the 12 to 100 Pro later, which will be featured in a future Just Landscapes program. One of my first images was taken just a short distance from my home over in Kent at Bluebell Hill. It is on the North Downs, and you may have been there, but not on the hill, but under it, for this is where trains on High Speed 1 pass beneath the Downs en route for Paris or Brussels. Didn't see much of that, but the photo attraction was winter light picking up the tufts of foreground grass. There are occasions when a lovely walk does not live up to expectations photographically. Now this may upset Uckfield folks, but their walk to Buxted presented a very open landscape. Wonderful as an experience, but photographically challenging. I had the right sort of day, and I would admit that more atmospheric weather would change my perception of the area, but in the absence of that, a prominent feature, even if it is just a tree, does help to create the third dimension. Now we have some atmospheric lighting, and on a landscape more challenging than the last one. The late evening light within an hour of sunset brings to life an otherwise featureless view, even when you have water adding a touch of variety. Taken the following morning on my visit to Olbra. Some photographers might shake their heads when they see that I have used F-16, risking diffraction. The alternative by using a larger aperture would be worse, unsightly flare. A zoom for this type of shot is not the best optic. A prime lens I find is best, allowing F-11 or F-8 on aperture priority. Not far from home, is this oasis on the outskirts of London. One of the hidden benefits of micro four thirds is extra depth of field, but when required. I say when required because a knowledge of the hyperfocal distance is still necessary to ensure that all is sharp, even at factor eight. This was unexpected subsequently mentioned in one of my secret London programs. I was on my way to the Red House, a former home of William Morris, and stumbled upon Danson Park. I have used the path to lead the eye towards the house, framed by a tree and shrubs. When looking at the destination board at stations for the trains, perhaps Places not on your itinerary, have you ever wondered what one of them might look like? I have often felt that on the new Elizabeth line, through the centre of London, one of the destinations is Abbey Wood. Well, I am happy to report there is, or was, an abbey now in ruins, and a wood now looking particularly attractive at springtime. Both are a short distance from the station, and I can recommend the coffee shop at the Abbey. Another challenging landscape across the river from the last shot. I did a job nearby and had time to explore further. With the help of the Ordnance Survey map, I was curious to know how things looked by the River Thames. Fortunately, I found these disused barges. Well, I think that is what they are, but even with the right sky, it would have been a big task to achieve something photographic without them. On the way back, I felt this worked quite well, helped by clear light. Rainer Marshes is a location for bird photography, not so good for landscapes. High Speed One mentioned earlier passes through the marsh, and despite the train speeding by at something like 180 miles per hour, you are hardly aware of them. What is audible is a very 
busy expressway, but I have chosen not to show it. I am finishing with a few shots close to home featuring a landscape previously unknown to me. Must be a moral there somewhere. This shot has appeared on a calendar and shows the former asylum hospital in the distance, now converted to residential accommodation. Across the road are some lakes. Opinions may differ over the composition. It is a split view. Is the focal point the lake or path? So the eye wanders from one to the other. I felt that just featuring one reduces the picture to a statement, and anyway, showing the path in context is more commercial as it presents information about the place. Moving closer to Red Hill, we arrive at St. John's Church, its spire a landmark for miles around. As you may have gathered, these three pictures were taken the same day. I have taken it traditionally, Blue sky, foreground interest, and a spire framed by a tree. It's a commercial shot, not artistic. All images taken with the 12 to 50 lens. Originally the kit lens for the initial release of the EM5. The 12 to 100 Pro lens came later, but even today I have kept that lens because it is much lighter and, in my opinion, better optically than often made out. Unfortunately, it is no longer in production, but worth picking up second hand. But not for me, I'm going to keep mine 